Hello, uh, everybody. The, uh, thank you very much for being there. This uh, symposium is uh, uh, dedicated to, to uh, similarities and differences of early intervention programs in Italian regions. Uh, this is a symposium organized by the Italian Association for Prevention and Early Intervention in Mental Ill, HIPP, and is dedicated to the memory of uh, uh, Angelo Cocchi, who was the founder and uh, the leader of uh, uh, Programma 2000, the first early intervention uh, center uh, we started in Italy in uh, 1999. Uh, I would like to thank you all for being there, and I would like to invite the first speaker, Dr. Anna uh, Menighelli, who was the co-founder of Programma 2000 and uh, a leader in uh, this project, and is now uh, talking about uh, the Programma 2000, and the experience of the Programma 2000 as a, a leader and promoting uh, project for the diffusion, the spreading of uh, uh, early intervention paradigm in Italy and in the world. Anna, please. Thank you. It's an honor to open this symposium and that uh, remember the unforgettable president of the association. Scusate, come si fa? Sorry. Mi sta portando. Avanti, dietro. E con qui cross. vado avanti sì, e con okay. va indietro e con il queste fa il puntero laser no, si vuole okay. sì ma qui voglio andare ah ecco I'll try to summarize the description and the functions of the first and to date the leading early intervention service in Italy its history its main structural and clinical characteristics its outcomes and the, the, its possible future uh, 20 years ago in Italy uh, after the change brought about by the 1978 law reform, the organizational situation of mental health was already characterized by the setting up of a comprehensive and integrated system of community-based mental health services. But as yet, there were no early intervention services or a real culture on them. Graphically, you can represent uh, the Italian Mental Health Organization with its uh, 260 departments, uh, including interconnected, uh, diversified structures, uh, and linked, uh, linked with the other uh, agencies, social and health agencies of the area. However, no, no, I other. Um, in general, uh, we can uh, see that uh, there were many favorable characteristics, but uh, to favor early intervention implementation. Specifically, a teamwork uh, tradition Divers, flexible and diversified structures grounded on the local territory and the global consideration of the person and their context. However, uh, there have, have been many, favor, many other aspects uh, that uh, were obstacles for a prompt and general growth of care youth-oriented and evidence-based founded in a real and appropriate prevention perspective. These aspects were, and still are, a prevalent orientation to chronic pathologies and the advanced stages of pathologies. A widespread waiting attitude, uh, just the opposite of what uh, 
the opposite of the assertive strategies you use to seek and engage passions that are a, that is a central point of a youth focused uh, service. Uh, the, the scarcity of evaluation procedures with use of uh, assessment instrument, and finally, the dishomogeneity of the situation in the different Italian regions. But, hmm, sorry, in 1999, program 2000, program 2000, was created as an experimental initiative by the regional plan, and it was the first and most important a documented early intervention program in Italy, and maybe the first in a Latin European country. It is implemented in the mental health department of the Niguarda Hospital, the biggest mental health department of the city. From the very start, it has acted as a catalyst a leader, a promoter of change, a starting point, a model, a continuous experimental laboratory towards prevention perspective and actions. Yes, I must uh, remember again uh, the person who designed, founded, and guided the program for more than 16 years, uh, Angelo Cocchi. He wasn't merely the director of the program, but uh, always, mainly, its uh, real mind and soul. He had, uh, as the international community at the time did, uh, visionary but unavoidable goals and hopes. Basically, to implement early intervention throughout Italy, but also to promote a substantial cultural and methodological renewal, reoriented the services toward prevention. The function of a pilot evidence-based program, like Program 2000, was to provide sensitization, information, training, supervision, publications, research initiatives, scientific and organizational links. Specifically, these were, no, no. Okay. Uh, actually, our um, clinical and the um, most important questions to organize the asset of our program was uh, where generalist or specific program, who is, who is it addressed to, which theoretical approach, which team, which evaluation battery, which connections. In answer, we were helped by the knowledge of the uh, emerging, uh, no, the knowledge of uh, the new issues about psychosis, the emerging evidence about uh, uh, some strategies and particularly psychological strategies, and by the direct acquaintance with specific uh, programs uh, implemented uh, in uh, that time. Specifically, uh, these were our first models, uh, and we are very grateful for their example and their close relationship. So, our answers were specific program addressed both to first episode and ultra high risk, 17 and 30 year olds, a multi-componential program, cognitive behavioral oriented, a multi-dimensional with a multi-dimensional assessment and connections inside and outside the mental health department. The specificity of the program was uh, 
Linkler to a dedicated and multi-professional team, dedicated and attractive setting, a friendly working style, a prompt response within 24, 48 hours, evidence-based treatment modalities, and the involvement of users. The, um, our almost peculiar choice to put together in the same program, first episode and high risk, was um, linked to many reasons, uh, included, of course, the limited resources, but mainly and firstly to steer firmly our rising activity towards prevention considering the at-risk period at urgently in need of treatment that first episode. And our multidimensional assessment, uh, the multidimensional assessment allowed and allow us to plan very carefully and flexibly a tailor-made project for each patient and situation and individualized treatment path inside the multi-component program. Precisely, our inclusion criteria follow the indication of the literature and the most recent recommendation, summarizing the pattern of inclusion in the treatment follows the scheme. After the referral, as soon as possible, as I say, I said no more than 24, 48 hours after, the initial multi-component assessment starts with interviews with psychiatrists and psychologists, both to the young patient and their family. After the collection of the necessary information, the case is discussed in detail during the, during the weekly uh, team meeting. This morning meeting is considered by us as the heart and the real motor of the entire program, in which we take decisions, the work is supervised, the activities are planned. If inclusion criteria are met, the young is included in the program, and he and his family receive a proposal of individualized treatment following the first case formulation. Obviously, this case consultation is uh, dynamically updated following the steps of treatment and the periodic assessment. The, multi the multidimensionality of the assessment is referred to patients and families. As for the patient, the investigated areas are risk signals and specific and unspecified symptoms, social functioning, satisfaction on quality of life, neurocognitive evaluation, and in the family assessment, the considered crucial areas are principally expressed emotion, knowledge of the illness, and satisfaction and quality of life. All the options of the multi-component program are CBT-oriented. In detail, you can offer individual CBT, followed by 94% of the patients, of course, almost mandatorily psychiatric consultation, and if needed, pharmacological treatment, therapeutic groups on social competence and anxiety management, vocational and school support, physical well-being group, specific groups like English group and IT groups, co-managed by expert patients, a user groups which decide the many aspects of their activities, activities inside, but mainly outside the service, and can make suggestions for the organization of the program. A fundamental cornerstone sustained as the cognitive behavioral therapy by the scientific evidence is a structured individual family intervention based on psychoeducation, communication skills, and problem solving and, if necessary, personal support. As you can see, a very large percentage of families is individually involved from the very beginning as the same time as the, at the same time as the patient. A relatively new entry in the therapeutic and prevention offer is linked to the collaboration with the IFIS, International Physical Health in Youth Stream Group and results in the implementation of structured activities to protect physical health. 
Very briefly, I'll show you some of the three-year follow-up outcomes of the program. In yellow, the high risk, and violet, the first episode. These are the average of the total score by honors. These uh, by uh, BPLS, the red line indicates the threshold for remission. The uh, social functioning results and uh, average of an item of the satisfaction profile, a uh, pr specific item regarding the social functioning. Uh, being the first uh, in, in early intervention program in Italy, one fundamental task and important outcome has been to disseminate information, training, supervision, and to raise initiatives throughout Italy in a still virgin ground. In this slide, the regions where you gave workshops or courses are indicated with a red star. To date, in total, the initiatives are 81. We have participated in seven multicenter researches and three are still in progress. Certainly, the most relevant has been the Get Up trial, led by Mirella Ruggeri and Verona University. In Get Up, Program 2000 team was the principal actor in programming and leading training and supervision. In 2005, Angelo Cocchi and the Program 2000 team founded the Italian Association for Early Intervention in Psychosis, which, following the IP example, has changed its name to Italian Association uh, for Prevention and Early Intervention in Mental Health. The association has a strong scientific activity also with international participation of some of the most prominent clinician and scholars in the field. Important initiatives and are also outcomes of the association have been to surveys of the situation of early intervention in Italy and to produce a document for their development. To sustain some aspects of our activity, we funded also an NGO, Cambiare la Rotta, Changing the Route. This NGO integrates the offer of psychotherapy and physical and social support over the program and can understand them to the young which cannot be included in the program because they don't meet the criteria. The organization of this great conference in Milan as its roots also in our dissemination and international links. In these times, Program 2000 could be in an organizational and maybe risky turning point, but we are really confident that some basic key points will be maintained because its future and its legacy must always be an evidence-based and flexible model able to transfer and disseminate its characteristics of specificity and scientificity with growing connections and links, with a youth focus, and promoting a prevention-oriented services reorganization. Uh, many thanks to our past and present teams, but especially to our great present team, and many thanks to you for your attention. So, any questions? Um, no maybe we can join all, all the questions at the end of the symposium so we can discuss the, the similarity differences in uh, early intervention uh, uh, programs across Italy. Um, I am glad now to uh, I invite uh, here Dr. Angelo Carufiglio, 
with the leader of Gypsy, the first dedicated early intervention program uh, to have been uh, established in south of Italy. Uh, Dr. Carofilio will uh, uh, speak about the experience of Gypsy and uh, its functioning and its uh, uh, main uh, objective and outcome. Please, Dr. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming here. I would like to apologize in advance for me, my poor English, and I'm excited to be here today to take part in this very important conference. I couldn't miss the difficult test I have ahead of me for those who have believed in me. One of whom is Angelo Cocchi, who I miss every day in both my daily life and that of work as the chief of the Center Gypsy of Bari. The second is Anna Meneghelli, who constantly supports and, and stimulates me to think about and improve my commitment to early intervention in mental illness. The aim of today's pre presentation is to describe the method that founded Gypsy in Bari in uh, 2011, which is still today the only center in southern Italy, and I'll highlight two strong points. Fidelity to our inspiration patterns, pattern, Milano 2000 program, and innovation beginning from our background. We found the close cooperation between the public and private sectors surprising, surprisingly unusual. This is possible due to the transformation of a, a day center connected to psychiatric rehabilitation centers run by a private social organization which is institutionally recognized. I would like to underline the fact that in Italy, the day centers are semi-residential structures which accept 20 patients daily for a maximum of eight hours. The personnel in charge are mainly composed of educational professionals, while the psychiatrists or psychologists are there for a total of 18 hours per week. The centers are used the, the same areas and the same staff by increasing the psychiatrist and psychologist working hours. Despite the uncertainty of this project, which is checked every two years for confirmation, there is a list of a series of positive results from this new approach. More patients from 20 to 140 patients. Intensified clinical activity in diagnosis and early treatment to patients at risk or at the very beginning of their pathology. Personalized psychotherapy for every single patient. Group work for problem solving training, social skill training and anxiety management. Activities focused uh, on rehabilitation in social roles, such as work of study. Expanded the ages group range from 15 to 30 years old. Flexibility according to each single person in relation to school or university study hours. Flexibility in the number of patients accepted and the time they spend at the center based on each individual's specific needs. Young people at risk are included as well as other forms of the disorders such as bipolar disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder, severe anxiety and personality issues. The young people are monitored for about 50 years, starting from when they arrive. 
in those that have completed their therapy, we recommend they continue to have a regular control. However, however those that feel that they have completely healed choose to do the follow-up on the phone. The kitchen, canteen, and the relaxation area of the day center are used to reach the goals centered around young people. This space are used to give young people a sense of self-management where they are protected while avoiding family conflicts. This space also serves as a, a place to meet other peers that share the same problems and healing paths. It's a place where they study on their own or in groups, where they can find help and support they need when they are in trouble with cognitive deficit, concentration, learning abilities, which appear in youths at the very beginning of their pathology. It's a place where they learn to manage, cook, and be creative in music, theater, or photography. It's a place where they learn to express their opinions and how to become assertive through reading books and articles. It's a place where they improve their English and information technology skills. All of these group activities were created for the needs of the young people uh, and the working staff. Uh, the Center Gypsy also welcomes family hardship. Every family receives a personal, personalized project. Psychoeducation, uh, aid of so, so support for the parents' role, uh, short-term therapy for parents, family therapy, and multi-family groups. The following uh, are the results for uh, activities from January uh, uh, 2011 uh, to September uh, 2016. To date, we have uh, enrolled uh, 139 young people. Uh, 25 has been completed with positive result. Today, Uh, today, uh, we have uh, um, 85 patients in the program. 60% uh, we follow on intensive uh, program, uh, psychotherapy, CBT, uh, pharmacotherapy, and uh, psychosocial activities. 26% uh, just uh, psychotherapy and uh, 14 uh, a periodic uh, check. Um, In total, is the majority of our patients have been male, and uh, are you in, uh, 83 uh, are uh, high risk. No. Mm. Um, the as uh, the more evident age ranges are. Uh, more, uh, more evident age ranges are uh, from uh, 18 uh, to uh, 21 and from 14 to 17. 
the majority of patients come to the center gypsy by word of mouth. Only 50% uh, of them come from uh, GS GSMs. Uh, at the first episode, all patient, pa patients receive psychopharmacology therapy. More than half of high risk don't take treatment pharmacological. All in all, we can say that uh, the transformation of one of our previous structures has proved to be an opportunity be an opportunity which has been achieved through the method of standardized work. In the weekly meeting, we have adopted a methodology of uh, problem solving to compare organizational problems that have arisen. Both the family association and the volunteers are involved uh, in the discussion at the weekly meetings. What really makes this project work in, is the enthusiasm that we all have to help to young people get back uh, their role in life. Enthusiasm has given us the strength to accept the hard and, and an easy rate of work, but it's made us feel part of a project which is changing the traditional approach which favors chronicity towards a psychiatric patients. Optimism and trust are, be, are the beacons that give light to our everyday work and involving the young people in the healing process has made empowerment the main tool of recovery-oriented service. We are very proud of our yield youth um, the, that go, go back to their normal lives, studying or working, <laughs> having friends and building romantic relationships. Um, the, the recovery of psychosocial functioning is a, a very important outcome. Uh, 64 young people have returned to school and uh, 36 have found a job. 100 teenagers are now improving their psychosocial role. Our goal is that once a patient is healed, he or she shouldn't need to go back to psychiatric traditional approach. Thank you. So um, let me introduce the new speaker is uh, Marco Vaggi, Dr. Marco Vaggi, who speaks uh, about an uh, implementation of prevention of early intervention clinical service in a mental health community center in Genoa, Italy. Thank you, Dr. Ralpe, for your presentation. And uh, also thank you to Hanna Menegalli for the invitation in this um, important uh, symposium. Uh, I speak about the experience of, uh, of a mental health uh, center of Genova Voltri. Uh, he working in uh, a big city of uh, Italy, in the north uh, uh, side of uh, Italy, Genoa. Uh, you can see that it is a nice place, uh, not only for working, but also for uh, spend time. If you, everybody wants to, to come to Genoa for an holiday, we are waiting you. Okay. But uh, we uh, live and work here, and uh, we have uh, a big city with uh, uh, 700 and half uh, inhabitants, and the center of all three deal with an area 
of uh, more or less uh, uh, 100,000 of inhabitants. We care the every problem of mental health uh, in this area. Uh, our, our experience started with a reorganization of our center because uh, we, uh, the knowledge of uh, experience of Rogam Duemila, uh, we decided to, to change the valuation of new clinical cases and, and uh, we create a, a referral, a, an assessment functioning with a few psychiatric specialists. We divide the, the new case in three groups, under 25 uh, years old, the middle age, and uh, the over 65 uh, age. Uh, we decide to, to uh, create a specific assessment for the new cases and, and uh, assign the course of treatment uh, as the experience of the uh, Programma de Mila teach us. Now, uh, we have not uh, resources employed, but uh, we have to, to make uh, everything uh, is a resource. So, we uh, change the utilization, for example, of uh, the collaboration with general practitioner, uh, it's possible to reduce the visit for chronic patients, for example, but also for old age patients uh, to reduce the number of visits with uh, an intervention with general practice and other services. Uh, what is the assessment? The assessment for young people consists in a reduced waiting time compared to the other age brackets. The examination is very fast. Hmm? And the, the maximum flexibility for time allocation for the visit out of, of a center, for example, we have not a, a separate center. They keep uh, work inside in the general mental health center. It's a problem for a stigma problems, of course. We have a strong collaboration with families, uh, also with our other important uh, person, for example, general practitioner. Uh, the valutation consists in a psychiatric and a psychological valutation. We uh, use a rating scale, of course, and we uh, make an interview a caregiver, parents, but not only. And uh, now, after the assessment, we show the, the appropriate course treatment. Uh, I, I, now I'll show you not uh, the, the uh, protocol of intervention because it's similar to Programma 2000. Uh, I decided to show you what is the different pathways uh, in the um, population under 25 uh, years old. Uh, we decide uh, the course, uh, of course, not only but, uh, um, about the diagnosis, uh, is uh, one of the variables important, of course, but uh, there are other variable factors important, for example, familiarity, development, uh, trauma in childhood, event, stressful event, uh, example, Gracia migration is more important in our experience, uh, deprivation, social relation, and so on. Treatment is based on valuation of three important factors. Global functioning, uh, risk profile, and uh, resilience. I, uh, we, in, the, in our experience, uh, we have uh, divided the, the course of treatment in five pathways. Uh, you show what uh, is called this, uh, this pathway. Now I, I show the rates of patients who uh, follow the different pathways. Uh, the, now, now the patients who are treated in our center are in, this, in the, the last years are uh, 250. They, mm, they are separated in males and families, half and half. And the, 30 subject uh, whereas under 25 years old. Uh, these have a rates of the different pathways and uh, it's important that uh, they, they, um, they arrive in a lot of number by word and uh, in one, one patient out of four accessed by the parent initiative. A little, a little uh, number of patients arrive by the neuropsychiatry of child. It's a problem in Italy, the collection of the service for child and service for psychiatry adults. 
And uh, you can see that all, a few patients arrive from hospital. Uh, you can see that in Italy there is a, a, an organization, a community service uh, who um, dealt to a uh, control with other, other font of, uh, of uh, arrival. Uh, the first pathway is a referral to other medical agency. Is a um, 21, 13th patient for the place is variety. General patient who are sent by other medical agencies who have uh, half rehabilitation is considered to require uh, taking care of another department, for example, disability, is it for disability or, or general practitioner, for example. The transmission of a patient for another department is always guarded and protected. Uh, usually the specialist phone to the other service and then preceded by an agreement of a, of a child, of a young adult, and of course of a parent. The other pathway is, is monitored. We call monitored the patient with moderate and unspecific symptoms, for example, depressive symptoms, in which they useful in intervention, but no uh, uh, in intensive uh, intervention. It provides a counseling, two or three counseling section about uh, general risk profile, lifestyle, for example, self-care, relationship with parents, uh, and so on. The intervention is uh, uh, aimed to provide a, a friendly look of the service because if uh, after any years uh, the, the patient coming back, uh, it's important that uh, the service is uh, more, is less uh, stigmatic, stigmatizing, uh, less, less stigma. But <laughs> uh, the, the third, uh, the free active clinical follow up uh, is uh, for patients uh, who have. Uh, necessary treatment, but not for psychotic syndrome uh, during, for example, depression after uh, pregnancy, moderate intensity of post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, in a short period, uh, during the treatment, we can uh, see a weakness, and so uh, decide to, to have a periodic checkup and uh, if present lost uh, contact, uh, he, he was actively contacted by phone, usually, or directly, or um, by parents, or general practitioner. Individual treatment concerned the patient. Uh, we have uh, uh, a diagnosis, a psychiatric diagnosis, for example, major depression, uh, OCD, and the uh, treatment usually is uh, by a psychiatrist, specialist or psychologist, in particular with a psychotherapy cognitive orientated. The last pathway is for the complex situation of early psychosis or high risk person. With is one out of five patients in our experience. Psychotic onset validated and treated, uh, reference to the program, Programma Milano and the Italian ministerial guidelines uh, the, uh, some a few years ago. Patients with a traumatic development, um, severe uh, personal disorder or brief psychotic symptom, or after patients with attenuated psychotic bad symptom, but familiar, important familiarity and uh, for severe uh, pathologies. And uh, last, uh, patient belonging to an international center or with a lot of legal problem is a, a, a high risk factor. I, I yes, uh, the, the, the light is, uh, is, uh, is not red, it's, uh, it continues slowly. <laughs> My final consideration are, uh, our experience start uh, more or less 10 years ago and start uh, with a reorganization of all the center we, we are work. We think it's possible to change the approach to the early psychosis uh, also working inside a general mental health center. Uh, we have not another, another uh, center and uh, in uh, 2010, the, the, in the 2010, we decided to change the approach only 
uh, new cases under 25 uh, years. Not only psycho early psychosis, but also other pathologies. Uh, all the service uh, change his idea about approach to young people. The second uh, consideration is uh, the, in the, uh, the, uh, the beginning of our experience, uh, only one uh, and half percent of uh, young people arrive to the center now, more or less, uh, are 10 percent. Uh, we are convinced is a good goal. And uh, we have now the dedicated center, we have a problem of resource, uh, of course, but uh, in our experience now, in the last years, uh, no patient uh, call, uh, want to visit the psychiatry outside. Uh, the center is not uh, a bad place as the beginning of our experience. And uh, the ratio between uh, patient treatment and clinical monitoring, our intervention is of prevention in some cases and of treatment in other cases, is uh, balanced and is stable. In the last three years, it's stable. And this is another important factor. Uh, I, I will finish my presentation with uh, a thanks to my colleagues of uh, Center of Alti, the, the name uh, as, uh, is uh, of this, uh, and uh, thanks you for your attention. So it's a pleasure to introduce us uh, the fellow speaker is uh, Dr. Giuliano Limonta, from the Mental Health and Pathological Addiction Department of Piacenza. Uh, Dr. Limonta um, speak us about a stand-up project. La Gengio com'è? Yes, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, I'd like to thank my colleagues and my collaborators in the Stand Up project. Uh, team leaders, they are the team leaders for our program in uh, our different mental health centers or members of our faculty of the program. They are uh, the psychiatrist Massimiliano Imbesi and uh, Franca Bonara, uh, Antonio Saginario, uh, and uh, Francesco Pratesi, and so also the uh, clinical psychologist Ornella Bettinardi, Alessia Pisano, who was a, a precious gift from uh, Milano 2000, <laughs> Alessia, and Fabio Macchetti. Um, so, we, we will present a clinical intervention model called Stand Up Project, implemented in the network of uh, uh, Piacenza Mental Health Department, using a special standardized and structured or organizational model named PDTA. Uh, it's an acronym uh, for Diagnostic Therapeutic uh, Assistential or Psychological Welfare Work Pathway a sort of a rapid specialized clinical path related to a specific pathological target. The focus of our inquiries is the effectiveness of clinical intervention models related to first episode of psychosis. Effectiveness as efficacy based on evidence in the routinary clinical practice. Effectiveness also as efficacy possible with general pathological target, with patients with a long lasting vulnerability and persistent disabilities. And a sustainable clinical treatment within the organization of a complex department like our department and within economy of generalist public health service like Italian public health service. So knowledge about evidence-based effectiveness of new models of clinical interventions 
are often impossible to employ within a structured health care system that is blocked in the frame of treatments as usual. Our efforts has been aimed at going gradually but significantly behind this gap. Stand-up project about psychotic onset, it has been a long work from 2009 to 2016, organized in four steps to make the routine application of CBT and psychoeducation for public mental health centers. No, doesn't work. Okay. The third steps. Uh, the first steps start up with an opportunity of a research. Uh, in uh, 2009, uh, research was a trigger for initiating for us participation of Department of Piacenza to strategic national research finalized program Get Up. Focused interest about this topic, experimented extractorate intervention addressed to onset of psychosis in three of our mental health centers, and started a specialized education addressed to a first group of professional, initiating about 15 operators. Pardon. This is the, the first, one of the first uh, reports uh, uh, published on schizophrenia bulletin in 2015 about uh, program Get Up. After Get Up research, stand up a program. Uh, the second step. Uh, after research, the ordinary clinical intervention. In 2012, after the research program Get Up has been concluded, an operational translation of clinical intervention model was carried out in the whole network of psychiatry services addressed to childhood, adolescents, and adults. Department program stand up. Piacenza is a city and, and an area close to Milan. Uh, we have a, a, about 300,000 inhabitants. These are a network of our mental health centers in Piacenza department. Uh, in blue, 12 child young mental centers, and in red, 11 adult mental centers. The patients, adults, is 5,000, about 2.8% of every age patients, and children, adolescents, until 16 years old, 3,346, at about 7.5% of every age patient. The third step was a hard training for clinical competence. Uh, it was a prerequisite. Uh, we had uh, a, a good uh, uh, opportunity to enjoy the precious and high-valued partnership with uh, uh, Programma 2000. These are our trainers. Uh, Angelo Cocchi was our trainer. Angelo Cocchi was also uh, a, a team leader for our, for the, our board of uh, examinations, of examiners. And now the leader is Anna Meneghelli with Giovanni Patelli, Laura Bislinghi, Andrea Alpi.
these pictures show uh, one year uh, training, a one year training in our department. Uh, we have trained 50 professional, 50 operators, psychiatrists, psychologists, nurses, educators, and social workers. Uh, the training is during one year, and uh, it was a theoretical learning, but also practical exercise and uh, supervision supporting. First step was a hard step, but decisive. Uh, integrate the model in the ordinary network, in all the ordinary our network. In 2014, 2015, a radical and stable adjustment of organization and structure of department service. Thanks to, follow, to the following organizational instrument or model, we, we call PDTA, Diagnostic Therapeutic Assistential Path, Psychosocial and uh, Welfare Work Path. In order to continue and disseminate practical application of the model, CBT to patients, psychoeducation to family members, psychopharmacological treatment, intervention of social functioning, early individual habilitation or social rehabilitation, as an ordinary integrated therapeutic intervention in all our health centers. So PDTA is a special treatment we used also for other pathological target in the, in the department. It's a special treatment used, it's addressed to patients with severe, complex, long-lasting illnesses associated with a high risk of chronic disability and chronicity. It's a sort of uh, integration with uh, many functions, therapeutic functions, like biomedical functions, the first box, or structural psychological help function, the second one, and assistance and rehabilitation function. Yeah. La la. PDTA links usually different services, department, childhood and adolescent psychiatric, adult psychiatry, psychiatry, addiction services, and social services. PDTA is carried out by specialized to target professional. It is supported by a dedicated faculty. It's a team of professionals and trainers for education, for clinical competence, assessment activities, quality, fidelity, and research. Our department has been using the PDTA model for several special disorders, like this for severe eating disorders. You can see the path links different centers and different services, uh, uh, childhood and adolescent neuropsychiatry, basic hospital pediatry, adult psychiatry, first aid emergency ward, center for additional treatment, and so. So our department has been using also the PDTA model for autism spectrum disorders. Or for alcohol addiction. Since January 2014, a PDTA addressed to onset of psychosis has been activated in Piacenza. PDTA become a sort of underground network which enriches, replaces, reorganizes traditional paths. It's a specific and quick, like underground train, and quick treatment path with a limited patient target. It is integrated with traditional services and with the network of routinary intervention. 
This is underground map of mental health center now. You can see four lines are active and the, uh, five and six are work in progress. Enrollment of patients at onset of psychosis into PDTA, the line number two in uh, green, happens gradually. First of all, in 2000 and, uh, two, 2014, 2015, we en have enrolled only strictly schizophrenia spectrum disorder patients. Now in 2016, we are enrolling major depressive disorders and bipolar disorders. And in 2018, uh, we hope to enroll delusional disorders, not schizophrenia, high severity personality disorders. Mm, pardon. This graduate, this graduate, this one, pardon, don't function. This graduate and cautious enrollment is not inspired by theoretical principle, but it's due to practical and operational reasons to get a deep and stable implementation of the model in all community health mental center. We say in Italia, andare piano, sano e lontano. So go slowly, but far away. <laughs> okay. okay, okay, and help also. Or uh, my presentation is focused on effectiveness. Uh, uh, but uh, obviously, we, we, we have also, we aim to reach a, a good efficacy. So we present you uh, very, very quickly uh, our first result. We enrolled 65 uh, patients, uh, spectrum schizophrenia pure. Pure spectrum of schizophrenia. Patient who handed get up or stand up was 44, and patient in treatment now on the line two uh, are 21. All patient enrolled is stand up are evaluated at the beginning and 6, 12, uh, 18, uh, 24 months later. And the results of psychiatric assessment scale and also cognitive behavioral assessment outcome evaluation. <coughs> and finally, satisfaction profile. The results are good and satisfying for us. Conclusions. The continuous effort to implement intervention of proven effectiveness allows to update treatment options in service, make permanent adjustment of clinical competence of professional, aim at equal treatment options for the world target population, offer an important feedback of clinical result in the area of research in evidence-based medicine, integrating real word and experimental studies. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much to all speakers. We have contributed to illustrate the panorama of uh, uh, early intervention services and programs active in Italy. There are programs in uh, the north of Italy, in the south of Italy, and in the center of Italy. 
and uh, this program, uh, in some way, present uh, one main similarity, the interest in the early intervention paradigm. Uh, the interest in uh, uh, an intervention which uh, uh, assume people need treatment as early as possible. However, the implementation of uh, early intervention services uh, also uh, presents some uh, differences, and the main differences, I think, is in uh, the uh, strategy used to implement the program. Uh, in some program, uh, a specific model is, uh, was uh, developed. In, uh, in other program, uh, the uh, main goal is to favor access to treatment and uh, uh, modality of treatment tend to be uh, different according to the main uh, philosophy of the center implementing the, uh, the program. Uh, I would like uh, to have uh, some uh, question about uh, uh, this point. Uh, I would like to uh, invite here uh, Max Birchwood, who is one of the uh, main contributors to the paradigm of early intervention. Uh, I think uh, Max Birchwood is so known for his uh, studies, uh, he, he need no further presentation, so I invite here gladly. Well, this has um, been absolutely fascinating for me. Um, it's um, really interesting to see how, um, you know, following the inspirational work of Programma Due Mille, I've got that right, there you are, speak Italian already, and, uh, uh, and also from the Get Up Project, um, there's been clearly a momentum gathering here, and I think there's a lot of similarities, more similarities than differences here. Um, and it's what, what struck me very strongly is, you know, compared to when, you know, I first uh, started to come over here and, and uh, meet with um, Anna and Angelo all those years ago, it's really fantastic to see this, you know, beginning of what I think is probably a tsunami of change that's going to, 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 to move across Italy. It's, it's really, really interesting. And it also, for me, echoed a lot. It reminded me a lot of when I started out in, on this path in the 1980s and 90s, um, you know, develop, thinking about what early intervention might be and thinking about how we could begin to implement that in the, in, within the context of existing resources. And I think that was really interesting how in it, very strong echoes of, you know, it reminded me a lot of my early days of thinking, what can we do within existing resources? And then that led to, you know, uh, acquiring new resources. So I just want to, just, if I may, just spend a couple of minutes to just some, on some reflections generally and then maybe one or two comments on the individual um, projects. So um, for me, there are some you know, when thinking about implementing early intervention, it, um, it's really not about a particular service model. It's really about making sure that the, there are clear objectives that, uh, that, that you, you're, you're keeping true to. And I'll come back to that in a minute. For, for me, they are, first of all, you need to be population focused to have a sense of, you know, how many new cases of psychosis there are in a population. How many are you seeing relative to the incidents, and where do they go? I think, you know, at some point that's really important to understand and to have that a public health perspective at some point. Secondly, and it was touched on a little bit at the end, I didn't see this a lot in the presentations, but, you know, one of the arms of early intervention is to reduce untreated psychosis. And um, there was not a lot of mention of DUP, but it's really, really important in our field because, um, you know, we need to make sure as much as we can that DUP 
is wherever possible below six months. Um, there's no you know, golden threshold, but six months seems to be a point at which, beyond which, recovery gets more difficult. That's what the evidence suggests. And so, you know, I think services need to ask themselves, how can, what is our DUP? And for those people over six months, why are they taking so long to get into care? And it may be something to do with stigma, but as I found in Birmingham, it's also a lot to do with delays within the mental health services once people are referred. You just don't know, and I think it's really important to audit that. Point three is that these things need to be sustained. I wasn't entirely sure from the presentations I saw, but they were very brief, and um, uh, uh, there's probably clarity here, but how long this is sustained for, I think it's very important. No one really knows you know, how long, and it's probably different for different people. But you know, as a, a first start, I think this kind of care needs to be sustained probably for three years in the first instance to begin to make a real difference, and this is what the so-called critical period idea. Um, fourth principle, and I think everyone, all the services that you described uh, were really impressive on this point, that there's a clear effort and focus on delivering evident, the evidence-based interventions, which are, yes, low-dose neuroleptics, but also, and I think this is very, it says something about the, you know, the Italian culture of mental health and psychiatry. Very strong emphasis on families here, on individual psychotherapy and CBT, and on employment support. That was very, very clear in all the presentations. I thought that was excellent. My fifth one is that in some way the service has got to have clear objectives and have some means by which the service can say to itself, are we meeting these objectives? Do you see what I mean? In other words, there's some kind of reflection at some point that says, what are we doing? And for those for whom we're not meeting our objectives, what are we doing about them? So there's, it's, it's a good thing to have outcomes and graphs and so on, but I think it's really important that we use that information to say, who are we not doing very well with? And how are we going to improve the outcomes for the, these certain individuals. So you remember David Fowler this morning, this morning talking about, he and I are involved in this study, we were looking at early intervention non-responders, people with high disability who just didn't respond. And I think that's the kind of thing I'm, I mean. I think it's very important to be, to be clear about who you're helping, but also who you're not helping and why. So just last few minutes, um, one, one thing I've learned in the UK is that um, there's no single service model that's necessarily going to deliver that. What we did in the UK and also PAT in Australia, we developed dedicated, separately focused teams, partly because our young people did not engage with our services. They didn't like them, they were uncool, they were too stigmatised. So we had to develop silos, these, these, these streams of care that had, were very youth friendly and that, that young people engaged with. Now, and, and now we're, we're, uh, as the second generation is going on, we're slightly changing that. Now I'm very fascinated by whether you think that that kind of model would be helpful here or not. And I'm just struck by what um, Mirella was saying yesterday and what we heard from the last presentation. Um, uh, was that uh, uh, that in uh, the, the default data that that Morella presented was the engagement of young people with psychosis in generic gen in the general services seems to be pretty good. I, I remember the, the the figure of eighty percent. Now whether that's reflected everywhere, I don't know. Now this is really important uh, in terms of how you configure a service. And what the GetUp project showed that you could integrate this care within these general services and you've all described pathways and I think that's certainly the way to go. Um, and you know, it's an interesting question. If you compared that model with, with a, a dedicated team model, would, you know, would the dedicated team model help or not? Um, it's very interesting to see you've, you, a lot of the services have gone down developing pathways within your generic services. 
uh, where, how, how the extent to which that is sustained over time um, is very interesting. But uh, it's different from what we have in the UK and in Australia. And whether you think that you will evolve eventually into dedicated teams or the pathways would be sufficient, I think would be um, a, an interesting question for you to ask. Just another couple of observations. I was listening to the presentations. Um, and uh, I was struck by, I think, um, the Gypsy Project, I think it was, and uh, the project in um, Genoa, I think. Bari. 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 The project in Bari and, and also the pro pro project in Genoa reminded me very much, in both of those settings, and probably all the settings actually, but it just struck me a lot there, that there was an effort to look at how you can reorganize existing resources and use those resources and to be able to create a space within those resources for this kind of work. And I noticed that I think in the Gypsy project, very interested, they developed, uh, identified um, a, day, a day center, I think, as I understand it, uh, a, some kind of daycare center. And yeah, that's right. And, and that was previously used by a different group of individuals. And um, there's an effort to create a space by, you know, seeing the extent to which two ways, part, collaborating with other agencies, I think that was very clear, and also making sure there's more uh, support for people with other conditions in primary care. And I thought it was very interesting that basically there's an attempt to create space within existing resources. And it just echoed very strongly my experience about 25 years ago when our first effort was to uh, transform a day centre that was used for people with anxiety disorders and uh, various other things that didn't really need a day centre. They were managed in other settings and we used the resources in that day centre to begin the process of developing a, a focus on first episode psychosis. So I could go on but you know I think it was there's a lot of great work going on here, a lot more similarities and differences but I think there are interesting <laughs> important questions that the services will have to think about as you know what is it what is it that ultimately you want to aim for in the way that services are structured and be clear about what the core objectives are and you know agree those between yourselves but anyway thank you very much it's a great great presentation I think we are, uh, first of all, thank you very much to Max Birkschwitt for his enlightenment on uh, the, the symposium with an emphasis on three main topic. Uh, focus on uh, goals, the formation of a dedicated team, and emphasis on pathways, a chance to treatment to reduce duration of untreated illness, duration of untreated psychosis in the specific. Uh, I think we have time for some questions, and we need, yes, thank you. The, oh. Yes, I have. Yes, oh, okay. I have a comment. I have a comment um, because I, uh, since I think uh, the considerations by Professor Birchwood are very important and I fully agree with the emphasis on goal uh, on uh, uh, yes, it's uh, better. Not better, but yes. No, I think uh, the observations by Professor Birchwood are very important and I, I, I fully agree with the the emphasis on the issue of goals and the issue of looking at the population-based impact of early intervention services. I think that it's very important to make comparisons of different models and different ways to, to uh, organize the early intervention services in Italy. And we, we programmed the MILA as a specialized services uh, with, a, with a very, very, uh, we did more than 15 years of experience, obviously. So, uh, and win an outstanding uh, record of uh, uh, educational activities and dissemination. Other services
services are mainly, ba are mainly based on the existing models of community mental health services. Anyway, I think that th this symposium could give us the, the idea of uh, setting up a research agenda for comparisons of early intervention services across Italy. And to, to, to this end, I think the suggestion by Professor Birchwood is very important. We need that early intervention services present population-based data. We need to know to what extent they are reaching the, the tar their target population. What is the referral rate? Are the mental health services or the other agency referring people to early intervention services? To what extent the, the existing services are, have an impact on treated incidents, for example? Because we know that in Italy, we have data in Italy from information systems that the treatment gap for schizophrenic disorders in our services is very high. It's probably between 30 and 40%. This is data from Lombard Information System, for example. We need to know to what extent early intervention services are able to reduce this gap. And what is the rate of the treatment rate in early intervention service in relation to the population incidence, or the supposed population incidence in the area. And last, I agree that we need that the information on duration of untreated illness should be collected routinely by early intervention services, looking also at whether services are reducing the duration of untreated illness, because this, I think, is a set target for intervention. I think that if we are able to set up a research agenda in Italy, comparing our different models and different ways of providing services, that will be a great step, step forward on the way set up by Professor Koch and Arna Menegheli 15 years ago. Oh, I will speak here. Yeah. Um, um, I'm just curious uh, um, uh, if the Get Up and the Stand Up project was a reorganization model uh, with uh, existing resources. Uh, I wonder if there was any uh, resistance uh, to reform. I mean, the, because of increased uh, case loading, increase of work, clinical work, something like that. So, if so, how how did you handle those? Uh, uh, obstacles. Is, is it correct in my understanding? It's a, it's a, very, a very good question. The reorganization of services into an early intervention strategy, uh, particularly in Genoa and in Piacenza, encounters some kind of resistance because uh, this reorganization means uh, an increase in caseload. Uh, uh, an increase in activity that before were not done. Uh, I would like uh, a response. Maybe Dr. Limonta. Parlo in italiano e voi fate la traduzione, che così almeno mi esprimo meglio e non mi concentro sull'inglese. Mi concentro sulla sostanza anziché sulla forma. Eh, beh sì, certo che incontra molta resistenza, questo di sicuro è la, è la resistenza della ri riabilitazione, <ride> è la resistenza della riabilitazione del singolo soggetto che si trova anche nel grande corpo del network dei servizi e, e allora bisogna fare la stepped care insomma. <ride> E yeah. quindi cominciare con la formazione, poi cominciare con degli obiettivi circoscritti, eh, e seminare, eh, come dicevo prima, piano piano. Noi però stiamo eh, tenendo da 4-5 anni e quindi penso che noi abbiamo già superato la, la possibile crisi del reflusso o del naufragio De, delle nostre metropolitane insomma le linee di superficie i tram eccetera dei servizi as usual resistono molto insomma ovviamente a, questa, a queste nuove linee sotto anche perché i guidatori i bigliettai eccetera sono gli stessi part time cioè uno guida il tram su e quindi fa l'esercizio suo ordinario e a part time guida, partecipa a tempo parziale a un progetto, a un altro e a un altro. Ok, uh, uh, yes, 
there was there were resistances to the implementation of this change, and uh, to uh, reduce these resistances, the strategies was uh, to uh, begin with formation and education of the team, so to spread knowledge about uh, the early intervention paradigm, the uh, utility uh, of the early intervention uh, programs, and so on. Uh, the second strategy was the involvement, the active involvement of people in a uh, program with a step-by-step -step implementation of these programs. So there was no a sudden change in the organization of the services, but a smooth uh, implementation of them. First one change, then another change, and so on. Uh, this was the, the main strategies used to uh, overcome resistance by the institution, which always in Italy, but also elsewhere, tend to be very, uh, very <laughs> skeptical of change. Uh, is, is this a, a, a response to your question? It is a very important question, and a, a, a anyone who plan to uh, implement an early intervention uh, system, an early intervention program, using the same resource, so changing the organization, but using the same resource as before, must take into account the resistance of the system. So uh, information, education, is the first steps, always. This was one of the main uh, leading uh, strategy that Angelo Cocchi and Anna Melegheli use it to diffuse the ways to spread the early intervention paradigm in Italy. Information, education, then uh, support to uh, people who want to implement uh, the program. Uh, one question, maybe the last one. Yes, uh, yeah. I, I come. Just a moment, then. Yes. sorry. Because uh, uh, Dr. Ah, oh, oh, no, no. Dr. Ciancaglini mm. was the 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 the, 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 si. the part of mental health in Genoa, so he know the resistance from. <laughs> eh, rispetto all'evitamento del naufragio, nella nostra esperienza mi, posso, mi sembra che si possa dire questo. È difficile immaginare un servizio che funziona come 30 anni fa e che poi separa una linea di, intervento sul, di interventi precoci che fa delle cose fenomenali. Questo mh, non può esistere e se esiste, esiste per un po', diciamo, ma poi sì, ma perché... Eh, ci sono tutta una serie di attacchi a quella che può essere l'esperienza pilota se avviene all'interno di una situazione diciamo, in cui tutto il resto è fermo. Allora credo che uno dei punti sia questo, solamente laddove i servizi si rinnovano organizzandosi su funzioni, su percorsi di cura, su specializzazioni, su vocazioni diverse ma entro certi limiti contemporanei, la linea di intervento sul, sugli esordi e sui giovani diventa un progetto di tutti, compresi quelli che non si dedicano necessariamente a quel tipo di percorso. E quindi questa direi che è la condizione, cioè che i percorsi dedicati i percorsi di specializzazione, i percorsi che richiedono una formazione specifica, siano un elemento della riorganizzazione complessiva e riguardino diverse aree. Altrimenti l'esperienza ci dice, noi a Genova ne abbiamo fatta una sui disturbi del comportamento alimentare, tragica, negli anni, a cavallo degli anni 90 e 2000, eh, si va incontro a un naufragio, più o meno con più o meno morti, ma insomma... Come troppo contemporaneamente che eh, scaravoltano un po' il servizio, lo riorganizzano eh sì, eh sì. oltre un certo livello. Eh 
Thank you very much for this puntualization. Uh, I think we have the, the time for the last question. Last question. Yes. Um, I am a psychiatrist and I work both on early intervention team and adult uh, service. And I work in the same place, in the same study. And uh, I, I try to struggle every day and to do both. And I know we have a problem with the stigma, but we, we can uh, minimize it with a friendly relationship, with a kind of uh, friendly gr um, background and being quickly in the responsive and uh, flexibility in the appointment and so on. But we have a very, very great advantage. We give continuity. Psychotics go away and come back. And they need to find me after 10 years. And, and they know they, they will find me and in the same place. Uh, this is, for me, a very uh, great uh, uh, advantage because they, they need to be uh, in cure for many, many years. That's in my that's my experience. Thank you very much for your experience, which is related yeah. to the uh, opinion expressed by Dr. Ciancaglini. I would like to remind that in Italy, there is uh, I think the first in, in the world a PhD <coughs> dedicated to early intervention in Rome. Uh, the chair is uh, the founder, uh, Dr. Fiorinastro, who is here. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, formation is very important, and uh, the uh, information about the model and about uh, the strategy. Uh, early intervention is a, a paradigm in psychiatry. It's not only a strategy to treat uh, uh, people with psychosis, because it might be applied in other areas too, in eating disorders, for example. Uh, one important point, remember by Dr. Ciancaglini, is you cannot have uh, an isolated pilot program with work separately from uh, the department. Uh, in, in the public services, this is an experience we are likely to produce uh, uh, conflict, resist, uh, increase resistance. On the other hand, and the experience of the, of, of the colleague of us uh, uh, was reported here, uh, is that uh, the, uh, an early intervention team can influence the working style of the department. It is very important because the change in, in the working style of a department may have an impact on the treatment of the patient, even two patients are not followed by the uh, dedicated early intervention team. Uh, I think Dr. Uh, uh, Professor Ruggeri showed that. Uh, is one of the findings of the GATAP program uh, there was a minority of patients that do not accept to be treated by the early intervention program, but they were in a department that implemented the early intervention project. And this patient went better than these patients that refused to be treated, that received a, a different treatment in a department not implementing an early intervention program. Uh, an early intervention team can change the working style of the department. This, this is very important, but it's very important also to produce data. We need data, reliable data. Uh, I think this is, uh, is an important message from Mario Negri, I think, <laughs> because uh, having clear information make uh, uh, a point of reference for uh, further change. It is, a, it is a legacy of Angelo Cocchi. We always insisted on having data, uh, having miserable assessment of what you are doing, because you can evaluate the quality of intervention only if you have number. Thank you very much. And